Hello you, welcome back to Geekism, we're here in Planet Coaster, we're continuing our Let's Build series, uh, the most popular series on the channel by an absolute mile, and I, uh, and I can completely see why, because it's my favourite to play. Oh, this game just keeps on giving. Uh, we're here to finish off go cars. we pretty much box them off in this episode, couple of little bits of uh, scenery still need doing, uh, but they are going to be dependent on what we do with both the train track and the path on the other far side as well, so uh, it's mostly going to be bushes and foliage, so we'll just do bits and bobs, uh, but the, uh, the pretty much all of the go-kart scenery is now finished, and also the Roctopus as well. Uh, again, we're keeping this area quite lightly themed really, sort of very open. Um, you know, we've spent a lot of time with the log flume that's underground, it's out of the way, so I really wanted to make sure that a lot of this stuff could be seen from the outdoors, where we're going to be spending a lot of the time anyway. Uh, also, we get to use this awesome shark <laughs> archway. Um, as soon as I saw this, I knew exactly that I didn't want to use it as an archway, I wanted to use it as a real, uh, sort of really large uh, set piece. And uh, I thought, what better way to do it than have it with, as part of the go-karts? So here now, you're going to be making your way into Shark Bay's Reef and uh, and you're going to get uh, a big mouthful of shark as you come whizzing around the hairpin turn there. Or well, not quite a hairpin, I suppose. I don't, I don't know. I don't do racing terminology. <laughs> uh, they've had to sort of back patch up the back of the shark here with uh, with some of the art pieces. Uh, it would have been really nice to see two of these been put into the game, one as an arch and one as just a piece of scenery, but who knows, we may end up getting some shark animatronics in the future. Uh, you know, they keep on giving to Frontier, so uh, so far I'm really happy with it. Um, here, a weird little thing keeps happening occasionally, you can't really see it on the video, but some of the... Um, the, uh, the splashes go a bit funky every now and again. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a, a graphics driver glitch, although I'm still rolled back on the graphics at the moment because of the issue we had uh, with the lighting from the last NVIDIA graphics, so I'm sure it'll sort of come out in the wash eventually, but uh, yeah, it was quite funky. Uh, but it does mean we get to make this awesome sort of shark set piece here, and then this archway that we've got now becomes the entrance to Shark Bay, uh, shark Bay Reef, which I believe is the name of a sort of scuba area in uh, one of the Disney parts, I believe Typhoon Lagoon. I'm sure I've got it in my head from that, and I'm pretty sure it's not long shut as well. So this is kind of like an homage to that, uh, a way of sort of keeping the name on. I, I love the place, I'm pretty sure that's what it was called, as sort of, uh, you can go... Uh, not scuba, but snorkeling with rays and other things like that, and it was it was really nice uh, part of our honeymoon uh, that I really enjoyed. So it's a little way of sort of having a nod towards that. Uh, I'm looking for a specific couple of signs. There are a couple of new um, pirate signs added in 1.2, and for some reason they're not under signage; they just come under scenery. Uh, I find them eventually, but it takes me a little while to do. So I don't know why they. So there's a few items I found where the sort of, uh, I don't know what you would call it, the, the sort of naming convention is a little bit off and, and they're not in where you would expect them to be. I mean, it's not a major problem, but uh, it's the sort of thing that probably could be pointed out to Frontier and get and get sorted in a, in a patch. Here we go. This is one of them. This used to say Pirate Village, Darby Pirates or something like that. It's now blank for you to add your own text. Uh, I'll end up with Shark Bay Reef. I think it should be Shark Bay Reef, actually. I might go back and change that uh, in the future. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy with how it looks, and obviously, uh, the shark itself doesn't move. But by adding all those sort of areas of, uh, of splashing and things, I think gives quite a nice bit of little movement to it. So here, we're just doing a very simple set piece here, so you can come round the uh, as you come round the corner. Uh, oh, I found the ship's wheel there. I thought that'd be quite good to have that floating in the water. So we just add that while I think about it, and then we head back. Uh, so yeah, simple. Uh, thing you're going to become whizzing past it in go karts so it doesn't need to be anything uh, too decorative but it just is going to break up the fact that we're going to have a lot of foliage here to fill in the gaps basically so it's just a way of uh, sort of breaking up the foliage a little with a, a small set piece uh, you know a, um, a little hi a pirate hideout where he's got some treasure uh, one thing i have done in this video is there's a little less footage here than usual normally i would sit down and play the game for anywhere between 8 and 12 hours and then I would squish that footage down into a 20 minute video. Uh, I had quite a few, I wouldn't say complaints, uh, but constructive criticisms in the last video that it's going a little bit too quick, especially like moments like that where I swing around, uh, it's going a little bit too quick to really follow what's going on. So uh, I've actually only played about 
uh, five hours here, I guess, and uh, I've still squished it down into about 20 minutes, because I do, I do feel like that is about the right sort of length for a video, uh, but it does mean that uh, it's only sped up to 600% uh, and 800 in some places, uh, where I feel like it can be and uh, hopefully it gives you a better idea of the thought process and what's going on. Unfortunately, it's one of those things with time lapses is it does move quick and the videos are really to give you more of a general idea of how the thing's put together as opposed to real specifics. But remember, if there's anything specific that you want me to go over, please just send me a message on Twitter, I'll happily do it with, uh, with you, it's no problem at all. You know, If there's a specific bit of scenery that's going to be put down and you can't find it yourself, or a specific uh, technique I've, I've used to put a few bits of scenery together, like here I'm, I'm actually turning those into a building so that I can duplicate them, uh, all things like that are covered in the tutorial. So if there's anything specific you need, please either let me know or check the tutorial videos, because uh, they are probably covered there. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, you'll appreciate this. Uh, oh, what's going on here? Oh, that's me sorting some videos out. Oh, I better, well, there we go. Never mind. There you go. A little bit of a behind the scenes look at how the thing works. I think I was just checking as to whether or not the uh, the couple of videos I was uploading have been uploaded. Uh, my internet speed is pretty good here. Uh, we get a pretty good up and down speed, but uh, whenever I upload something, it completely tanks the internet. I can't do anything else while stuff's uploading online. Uh, so I think I was just checking they'd uploaded. So a lot of the time I have uh, videos on in the background while I'm doing Let's Builds. So I watch a lot of other uh, Planet Coaster creators, people like Delay Designer, Silverette, Rudy Renkamel, um, loads of others, SB Ridley, all the, all the guys that I'm sure you know and love. Uh, I love watching those all as well. Uthris, um, you know, people like that. So a lot of the time I have those on in the background. Unfortunately, I couldn't for the start of this because the videos were uploading, but now normally I let the videos upload overnight, you see, because it, uh, it makes such a big difference. So I'm placing a few of the animatronics here. I know it's not probably the most realistic to have animatronics outdoors because obviously you know there's going to be a lot of rain on uh, going on in real life so I may end up going back and actually just turning the the actual animation off there and just having them as statues because that's usually how it's done in the UK parks at least uh, a lot of outdoor rides will have these awful mannequins <laughs> sort of propped up against places they look terrible but it's all part of the charm I guess um, so I may go back and actually turn the animation off on those and have them as more of a mannequin as opposed to an animatronic but then you know this is a little bit fanciful it's a video game we're making our perfect park so perhaps we'll just uh, you know get away with it because it doesn't rain in the game yet although I do think weather is something we will see um, I won't lie to you if it does become a feature and it's turn offable if it's toggleable, I will probably turn it off. I've never really been a fan of rain in this in these sort of games. I find it just gets in the way. Uh, if anything, it'll be used to take a couple of nice screenshots, but then apart from that, it'll be turned off the same way that I usually turn day night time off as well. You know, I want my part to look as good as it can while I'm building it, so that's usually uh, 10 a.m. Uh, with the with the lighting set. So here we're doing some foliage then, um, like I say, a bit of work still to do along the right side of the screen as you're looking at it now, but we've got that train station sort of looming above us there really and I have a horrible feeling that the go-karts might be a little bit too close to it um, but it is something we're going to have to deal with over the next few episodes uh, figure out how we're going to theme that that station nicely uh, with it still looking um, sort of suitable and not just looking like a huge building stuck in the middle of nowhere so I'm thinking what we do is create it so the station is actually on the roof of a building uh, and therefore it's not going to be too high up um, so we may end up doing something similar to the main entrance to the Paris area that we've done with the sandstone castle, uh, building that up so that, the, uh, so that the train track itself is on the top of that castle, and then we can do a little bit of detailing in the front and a little bit of layering to make it all sort of make a bit more sense. And it may be that we go back to those couple of rocks that we just placed down there and actually extend the castle out a little bit and bring a little fort out rather than having rocks there. And that, again, it will make it so there's not just a big sort of high box stuck there. So as well as finishing off the go-kart track, we're going to work a little bit on the um, on the entrance to the ride and also uh, the Roctopus here. It's all kind of blends into be one building in the end. A lot of people ask me all the time to put stuff onto the workshop. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff won't translate well to the workshop because we're building this uh, sort of highly themed park and it all sort of is, it ties together. If you take little bits out on their own, they, they just don't really work very well on their own, basically. They, you'll see here that the, the building that we're going around the path with here, and we actually take it right around, we have a little bit of the path go over the water, uh, that building then comes around and becomes part of the building that creates the uh, the entrance 
for the for the go-karts as well and on their own I'm just tabbing it again for some reason on their own they just they just don't work very well because the buildings are so tied in with the terrain and with other buildings and with and with other bits of scenery uh, unfortunately it just doesn't really tie well into the workshop but I'm hoping once uh, once I get a little bit more uh, sort of optimal with my workflow when it comes to YouTube, which I am constantly getting better at, by the way, being able to create videos quicker uh, for you uh, lovely people. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to do some little side Let's Build projects where we build stuff that's just for the workshop and that will work very well standalone. I really wanted to have a go at doing a standalone go-kart for the competition that they're running this week. Unfortunately, I just haven't had the time. Um, I may be able to do something at the weekend, but I'm pretty sure it closes pretty soon. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to miss that one. It, it is something I really want to do, those work on stuff for the workshop. Just, unfortunately, whenever I get into the game, I just really want to keep working on this park at the moment. So, uh, hopefully, you, you guys uh, will appreciate that. So, uh, a little bit of fencing here. Loving these chain pieces. They're maybe a little thick. Uh, for some of the stuff I want to do, um, but they, you know, they they hold up really well. Uh, I did want to use the arched piece here. There's like a curved piece, uh, but unless you have the ends quite high, it ends up in the middle is quite low. So, um, so unfortunately, it doesn't quite work out as I wanted it to. But we'll use these straight pieces, and I still think it looks great. And it's just another uh, another texture that we can work in. Uh, so I'm quite happy about that. Uh, we cut this end off with one of those sort of precipice things I don't really know what you would call them uh, but there we can come over and start working on this this is probably uh, the most complicated building I've done in the game although you can't it doesn't really look it uh, but it's certainly not a box basically I'm gonna build a building that fills this strange sort of shape here um, so it means basically every single piece of this wall is its own building and um, it looks a little bit messy uh, but in the end I think it works out, it turns out quite nicely I think the only thing I might have to do is go back and do a little bit work on the interior of it uh, but you can be the judges of that you can let me know what you think as you can see though uh, this building here which is the entrance to the go-karts also becomes part of the scenery for the Roctopus and that's one of the main reasons why a lot of this, my, my stuff just won't work uh, on the workshop because it's all just sort of tied in uh, so it's a little bit of a uh, uh, of an issue but hopefully like I say you guys uh, appreciate it so uh, loving the sandstone pieces I wish there was some more options there's a few pieces missing from sandstone that does fe that do feature sorry uh, on the other wall sets uh, hopefully they'll flesh those out in updates who knows but um, I do really like the sandstone walls I think they look great and they're really piratey uh, you know gr make some great looking forts this building itself uh, is sort of anatomically awful <laughs> it would never exist in real life especially if it was made out of sandstone uh, that's because for the most part it's archways around it originally it was just going to do a relatively open almost like a ruin uh, but i decided in the end that i actually wanted to sort of close it all off um, but we it does mean that we get this really funky roof uh, area because of how the pieces end up so I thought I'm going to have to try and fix that a little bit and cover it up so we'll stick a, uh, a tower on top of it. So there we have a tower uh, that's completely being uh, held up by archways. So you can see it's like, uh, what's the word? Uh, what's the word? Architecturally completely unsound is kind of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but it's a theme park. It, this sort of stuff goes. And I think it looks great in the end as well. So uh, I'm kind of happy with how it turned out. So we have this really nice, and again, it just gives a little bit of height. The go-karts themselves are quite low down, uh, so this just gives a little bit of height and breaks the eye line up a little bit. You know, you've got to think about sight lines and things like this. Uh, so like I say, with this fort and with another fort over where we do the train station, I think that'll give a nice little bit of height variation to the go-karts once we're all finished. Uh, a little bit of thatch on top, just to give it a bit of colour and a bit of variation. And, uh, and that's pretty much it all we do there again probably needs a little bit of light theming on top of it um, but for the most part we just sort of run around with this edging here just to sort of cap it off again it's not a usable area it's purely for aesthetics it's purely for show so I haven't got to worry about sort of doorways up there or anything it's uh, it, like I say it's purely just a, a terror in real life that would be made out of plasterboard or something you know it's not a, it's not a uh, load bearing building at all so, uh, last thing to do on it then is to uh, move the benches around apparently and um, and then we're going to work on the interior a little bit and then we'll add the sign. I have named the ride. Um, the ride is called, uh, the go-karts this is, it's called Rum Racers, uh, which was actually a suggestion that not only I loved, it seemed that you folks loved it as well because it got quite a lot of likes on the video. Uh, I am going to have to 
uh, come back to the video to find out the name but I do want to give them a shout out so let's have a look pirate go-karts there it is I click that hope it doesn't start playing in the background I think it will oops there we go yeah uh, so the name Rum Racers comes from uh, Cameron Appleby uh, thank you very much Cameron for coming up with an awesome name there was a lot of really great suggestions Kevin Wetzler had some really good ones as well the Jolly Roger Grand Prix the Crossbones 500 really great ideas um, but that one really stuck out to me as a, as a great name and it meant we can add some more barrels around as well and damn us we love our barrels don't we <laughs> so, uh, so the Rum Racers is the name of the go-karts the Roctopus I've kept the name Roctopus I actually quite like it as a name so uh, I'm more than happy with that a little bit of foliage here, mostly just to fill up the fact that the uh, the walls don't quite touch the paths there. So that bit of green, uh, if in doubt, stick a bush there. That's uh, one of the geekism uh, mottos I'm sure you know by now. So a little bit of work on the interior here just to kind of make sense of that uh, double layered wall. Uh, I think we actually go back and make that uh, an archway. Yes we do, yeah. Uh, and again, uh, try, kind of give it a little bit of a, a weight to the building, you know, rather than it just being an archway with this huge tower on top. So it kind of makes a little bit more sense. Trying something a little different here, using one of the rope bridges, um, or one of, one of the rope pulley systems, sorry, but it's dropped quite far into the ground and then we're using this new trapdoor uh, to the rope going. I was really hoping I could set that to stay open. Unfortunately not, it stays locked, so the rope kind of sits on it, which looks a bit funky, but um, I still think it, uh, it turns out quite nicely and again it's just uh, you know we're relatively limited in the scenery we have there's about 15 sort of good sort of pirate set pieces of scenery this you know the munitions the uh, the barrels and things like that so it's really a case of using those in different combinations to create lots of variation in texture and uh, in, in the ride uh, I think it turned out quite nicely uh, the last bit of the video is a little bit dull, I'm afraid. It's uh, basically fencing. Uh, this fence, uh, I'm so happy with it, and uh, I just stick it everywhere. <laughs> Probably go a little bit over the top, but it's the running theme that goes right through the go-karts. It's, uh, it's the fence on the exit, on the entrance. Uh, we probably won't use it through all of the pirate area, because there are a few other fences that probably fit quite nicely within a pirate area but I think here it's just a nice way of tying the whole structure together you know the exit structure uh, the queue the main queue area the the entrance structure they're all very separate buildings so it's little things like these this fence that sort of help bring those all together quite nicely um, little things you can look at doing uh, you'll see here with the fencing because it's a little bit too long we have a gap there so it's just a case of moving the barrel it instantly looks like that space is meant to be there which is great here's one of the new signs very sort of uh, Guybrush 3 board very very Monkey Island looking sign it looks awesome uh, and we call it the Rum Racers gives us a lot of space at the top there to do some finer details so we can't go wrong with the uh, skull and crossbones the ship's wheel to sort of represent a racing wheel is kind of the idea I was going for there and then we're going to tie in a few of the checkered flags as well. Uh, again, the whole idea with the go-kart build was uh, to try and get a mix of the pirate scenery and the new go-kart scenery and I think we've done quite well with it. I think uh, the, you know, the comments from the last video seemed uh, to be mostly positive. Well, all positive actually. I don't think I've said a single negative. So thank you so much uh, for your support. I'm really glad you guys enjoy it. Uh, so the run race is go-kart track. There we are. And then we have a bit of green here, if in doubt stick a bush in it so we just go over and these are actually trees um, but I think they look a lot better lower down and there's an even the whole palm tree just in there to give a slight variation on the uh, on the texture and there's a uh, getting caught on the roof there apologies bit of a space there I was considering putting something in there like a treasure chest or something uh, couldn't quite find something that I was happy with and then I remembered that we do have a little boat and it just fits perfect in there so I just sort of dumped that down there again doesn't really make much sense but it's just a, a you know it's something that very often happens in UK parks anyway just throw some scenery down there so <laughs> that's kind of the, the theme I'm going for with this go-kart um, although the whole park we're building is a huge park you know really highly themed very Disney-esque uh, go-karts in my opinion always suggest to me smaller park uh, you know maybe safari park uh, or, or even a traveling place something like that um, so I've tried to keep the scenery a little bit lighter uh, than we have done in other areas and uh, the last thing we do here is add a Roctopus sign um, probably need to have a little look at this if I'm honest I'm not 100% happy with how it's turned out 
but I really wanted to use that new side and of course the, the actual lit up Rotopus itself. But I, I think I may go, looking at this finished, I think I'm going to go back and do a little bit of work on this. So any ideas, uh, please drop them down in the comments. And uh, yeah, we just have the entrance sign there. Again, that used to be a toilet sign, but they now made it text uh, te editable, which is fantastic. Right, I finish off with a couple of glamour shots. Uh, so you can have a good look at the new scenery, including the shark and the main entrance. And finally, uh, a large overview of the area. Uh, you can really see the whole area coming together now. We've still got some gaps. Uh, in the next episode, we're probably going to do the uh, all the shops. You'll notice you can see the shops sort of plonked down all over the place there. So probably go back and finish all those shops off. Probably finish the log flume off. And then we're going to do a dueling... Uh, two dueling hybrid coasters around the back of the log flume area there so I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can give us a like, it really does help at the channel and if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries or suggestions pop them down in the comments and if you fancy a chat you can find me on Twitter I'm at Sparrow. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.